Hi guys, so here we have a very autumnal set I did this week um, using some of the glitters that are launching on Monday. So I've done the usual thing, so I've taken my ladies nails back to a thin clear base. I've done all my natural nail work um, and prepped and primed and we're ready to go on with the acrylic. So I'm coming in with CJP Peach Sorbet. Now these nails were heavily inspired by uh, Kerry Anderson. I will put her link in the description below. I've I wang on about her a lot. She does these beautiful geometric and cut out designs. So I saw a couple of elements she did the other day and I was so in love with that. I was like, oh, I need to add them into a set of nails. So with this nail, I'm going to be doing a little cut in with a strip of glitter. So I want to get this nail done in one bead. The reason for that is I want it all to be setting at the same time. Um, Cause then I can cut in with my dental floss. And obviously if you're doing it in numerous different beads, it will have loads of different setting times. So you'll struggle to get the, um, you know, to get that acrylic at the right time to then cut in. So bear with me, I'm now searching through my drawers trying to find my dental floss. And you can either use it um, straight from like the reel or I prefer to use them like on the little plastic holders like this. So I'm just going to dip it in my acrylic and you always want to make sure whenever you're doing any imprinting, say with dental floss, netting, anything like that, you always dip it in acrylic first, that way it won't get stuck in there, it will come away. And I'm just going straight across that nail, keeping that line as straight as possible. making sure it's right down at the sides too. And then I'm coming in with a bead of clear acrylic, um, patting it into this lovely super fine glitter. This is from the Hocus Pocus collection. It's called Sarah. And just patting that into that gap and then going over the top with another bead of clear acrylic just to make sure it's all sealed in. And then with this nail, I'm going to do a full glitter nail. So I'm coming in with a base of clear acrylic. Making sure I'm keeping it nice and thin. And then I'm getting a bead of clear acrylic, dabbing it into that glitter. And then placing that on the nail and then just nudging it around with the tip of my brush. And this glitter is Winifred, also from the Hocus Pocus collection. And it made my client think of pumpkins. So just nudging that round. I'm picking up another bead, just a little bit to pop on the tip there. So I'm just going to leave that glitter to kind of set in place before I cap it. Obviously these are a um, redesign so I'm not too worried um, about pinching or anything because there's already acrylic on the nail so can't really pinch it. And then I'm coming in again with that peach sorbet at that cuticle area and then blending forward. This nail I'm going to do 3D on so I just wanted a base of cover pink.
and then I'm just going to cap this full glitter now. Now normally when doing a geometric design I would do that now first. This design was kind of, I hadn't fully decided what was going to be on each now so it kind of grew as I went along but normally I'd have done the geometric now first. And I'm just patting, tapping and pulling that clear acrylic, making sure all that glitter goes nice and matte so you know it's covered. And then this now I'm going to be doing a geometric design on, so I'm going to start off by doing a thin clear base and then I'm going to let that base set before I come in with my next colour. So once that's set, I'm then going to come in with this beautiful red colour, which is Loganbury. I'm placing that a little further forward from the Kita Calera than I usually would. It's kind of like doing a reverse smile line but in reverse. So I want to kind of mirror that line of cuticle but leave um, a gap. If you look at Kerry's nails on her Instagram you'll see she gets a lot closer. She's much better at this than me but I left quite a big gap because I always struggle to get a really good uh, a nice structure when I do this. So because I'm doing a geometric design I want to still make sure I'm creating that structure and shape I want so making sure I'm thinking about the apex where it's going to be when the nail's finished and everything so working like with a strength powder so that you know that you don't have to cap and clear or anything. And then when I'm happy with that I'm just going to let it set and then I'm going to file around that top line nice and carefully and pushing against the acrylic, not down onto my client's nails. Careful around that cuticle area because you don't want to cut those cuticles. But I want to get a really nice crisp line. So making sure your file is 90 degrees to the nails, so it's not bent, like leaning either way. I'm going to give it a good dust off. I'm getting with my little brushy bit to make sure there really is no dust in there. And then I'm going to fill that with the fine glitter um, Sarah. And this is why I started off with that clear base to begin with so that it's there ready to go. And I'm not worrying about going over that line, I've just filed crisp because obviously I've, I've filed that beautiful crisp line so that when it comes to filing this design in later, that will come through as you kind of like file into shape. And then just making sure I cap that in crystal glass, make sure that glitter's all protected. And now for filing in. So my usual filing technique. Side wall, side wall, free edge. Obviously because these were a redesign I'm now getting that nice slightly more tapered shape that I want. And then 
gently around that cuticle area and then when you come down the body of the nail you'll see that that line will come through similar to when you do like a reverse French This is a lovely design, especially coming up to Christmas, because you can do lots of different stripes in there, and you can do like your green, red, and white, so that you end up with like your candy cane nails. There you go, so when I'm all happy with that, dust them off and then we're ready for a top coat. So I'm using my CJP LED top gloss. Now I'm curing that for 60 seconds in my LED lamp. And then I'm doing some 3D leaves on this accent now. So for this I'm using pumpkin spice, antique bronze and loganberry, all CJP. So I'm using my 3D brush, I'm getting a small bead, taking a little bit of the liquid out of the back of the bead and then placing it on the nail. Now because I'm doing a leaf, just before it starts going matte, I just want to get it slightly into shape, so I kind of pull that bead out, and then I let it set for a bit, and then I start shaping the petal, the leaves. I really struggle with petals and leaves, don't I? So I want quite a lot of movement in these leaves, so I want some nice shape, so I'm doing them in small sections, so I'm coming in with the side of my brush and then using the tip to kind of push in the edge of the leaf so that you get that, like that oak leaf kind of shape. And I'm randomly just picking up different colours. So I did these so they're all quite spread out on the nail, but I've seen people as well do it like from the cuticle area almost like in a in a round from there and then like layer them on top of each other and that also looks really pretty. Again, I just wanna get that bead into a bit of a shape. So we start pulling it out. And then start adding that kind of movement and texture in those flowers. Flowers? Leaves, Lucy, the leaves! <laughs> so I'm not worried about getting them perfectly symmetrical. So sometimes, like on one side, it'll be a bit bigger than the other. That's fine. I must say that CJP do have a beautiful selection of autumnal colours. They have some beautiful like chocolates and browns. I think they do actually have one called chocolate. That nice like chocolates and browns and like deep, deep sexy colours. And I'm just gonna keep adding little leaves until I'm happy. Now you might just want to put two or, two or three leaves on a nail, maybe just the one. 
this is one of my ladies who's quite happy to just keep putting on as much as possible. So I went for five. I tend to like a, an uneven number rather than an even number. I seem to think like with your petals and stuff, I think it looks, I just think it looks a little more natural. Sometimes when you've got an even number, it will then really annoy me that like they're not exactly opposite each other or something. Getting a bit quiet now because I'm literally doing the same thing for every leaf. So uh, just gonna let that carry on. Almost there, final leaf. And then I'm going to add some crystals to it. And these crystals are from my new, it's from the Glitter Fairy, it's Crystal Wheel, and it's the Metallics one. This has four different colors, um, a silvery chrome, a bronzy color, a really bright gold, and a rose gold. So I'm going to use the kind of bronzy color, um, which is Dorado. And I'm just going to randomly pop it pop a few crystals and across the nail. So using a teeny teeny tiny bit of my CJP gripper glue. Um, I get lots of people asking about adhering crystals to be honest I just use like less is more with your glue um, and I just use my little wax pencil to like stick it on place um, I honestly have very little problem with crystals adhering uh, whether it's whether it's because I always use genuine Swarovski crystals um, and then and a tiny bit of glue and if you ever put too much glue on the nail just use like a little bit of your like kitchen towel or whatever or your lint free pads to like soak it up and get it away from there because if you put too much glue on you will have issues with getting things to stick um but yeah like i know that in three weeks time they'll all be still attached and then i've just given that a little bit of time to let those 3d um leaves <laughs> really set and then I'm coming in with my cuticle oil so there you go guys I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial any comments questions or requests just uh, pop them below thanks for tuning in